So we're here in the Tank Museum workshops with our Matilda 2 tank. Uh, this vehicle, A12 Matilda 2, sometimes called the Senior Matilda, because before this tank was built, there was the first British infantry tank, the Matilda 1, the A11. And this was a result of thinking in Britain in the 1930s that we really needed about three types of tanks. We need faster, lighter tanks for reconnaissance. We need infantry or heavier tanks, well protected, fairly slow to help the infantry advance onto a prepared position, a target that's or a defended position of the enemies. And then we need a cruiser or a medium weight tank to then exploit the gap that the heavier tanks have made and go off and do the damage in the background. Now, in the mid-1930s, Hugh Ellis, who was the commander of the British tanks in the First World War, he becomes Master General of Ordnance, and he likes this idea of the supporting tank for the infantry. The problem is, at the time, Britain has got very little money to invest in tanks. So the first tank, uh, the Matilda I, the A11, is actually made to a very tight budget, and it looks it. Um, they sometimes call it a, a, a Matilda, like the waddling duck type tank that was a cartoon character at the time. It was built £5,000 per tank, including development costs. And even as they finished making that first type of infantry tank, they realised they're going to need something better. And that's when they designed the Matilda II, which doesn't actually start production uh, until later in the 30s, uh, in September of 1939, they've got two of them are actually ready and going into service with the army. Now, by the end of the production run, they've made just under 3,000 Matilda IIs. And there is a little bit of a tendency, like we always do, is we look back on history, we see the bigger things that are coming later, and we diminish the importance of some, importance of some of these earlier vehicles. But this is a superb cutting edge tank. It has got very thick armour. They give the production issues to the Vulcan foundry. They're the parent body that looks after the actual manufacture of this tank. And the Vulcan foundry is very good at casting. So for the first time on British tanks, we get major bits of casting. This whole frontal section and the turret is actually made of cast steel. Now that's better in terms of produ production and protection because what you've got there, instead of riveting a bit of armour plate to a framework, you've actually got a solid body. So there's less to be actually break, less to fly off, loss, less to go wrong if hit by an enemy incoming round. They put two diesel engines in the back, a pair of diesel engines, AEC diesels on the early models and later some Leyland diesels, which were slightly more powerful in the later models of Matilda II. Now the armour protection, it was aimed to be defeat any 37mm anti-tank gun. That's the standard anti-tank gun that was in service in the 30s in Europe. So they thought if it was protection against that, it would be okay. Actually, it was that much better and on the battlefield, this is the tank that caused Hitler to worry when he reads reports of their 37mm anti-tank guns bouncing off this thick armour. That's why Hitler gets heavily involved in the German tank programme and that leads to vehicles such as the Tiger um, because he's amazed at seeing how effective this thick armour is. Uh, in terms of crew, uh, three men in the turret, driver down the front, um, you've got a two pounder gun fitted to this vehicle, so 40 millimeter, and that two pounder fired a high velocity, a high velocity round coming out the end of the barrel. Um, it did have a high explosive round, but it was so small, it was almost useless. There was very little bursting charge in a two pounder shot. So they only tended to issue uh, armor piercing rounds, about 90 were carried in the vehicle, armor piercing rounds, which come out with a huge amount of force behind them, and that two pounder in 1939, 1940 would have gone through any known German tank in operation at the time. So it was actually a very, very effective anti-tank gun. By 1942, it's easily being outclassed by the 50 millimeter long high velocity guns on the Panzer III, or later as well, those 75 millimeter high velocity guns that were put on the Panzer IVs. But early in the war, again, a very, very effective um, anti-tank gun, very effective 
uh, armour protection. Mobility, it's a slow tank, about 15 miles an hour, much uh, top speed. Don't forget, for an infantry tank, helping the infantry attack a prepared position, that didn't matter. Um, so they weren't too worried. About 150 miles, 160 miles range on the road um, before needing to be refueled as well. Now, why we think this is a really important tank is because in 1940, Matilda 1s and 18 Matilda 2s like this one do a really important tack on the advancing German columns going through France. They come back from Belgium, where we thought the German attack was going to be. They flood down the hill at, from Arras and from Vimy Ridge past Arras, and they attack a German column in the side, the 7th Panzer Division that was moving forward. And it really causes panic in the German ranks. Rommel has to come from the back of the column uh, and calm the troops down and actually find ways of trying to defeat the thick armour by using things like their 88mm anti-aircraft guns against the vehicles. So this tank, that attack, really frightens the German high command because it shows how vulnerable their tactics were in 1940. And also, because that slows them, it also leads to the chance for the British Army to be taken off the beaches at Dunkirk. So from that point of view, it earns its place in British tank history big time because it's, uh, it's influential in stopping um, that route that was going on in France at that particular time. And of course, also in North Africa, this tank gets called the Queen of the Desert. Its attacks against the Italians early on in the war in Libya um, caused tremendous problems for the Italians and almost the defeat of the entire massive Italian army that's out there when they attack using Matilda II tanks. Uh, and that near defeat causes Hitler to wake up to reinforce the Italian forces there with the Africa Corps. So this, in terms of British tank history, a really important tank. And it's one of the tanks we've had running here at the museum over a number of years. Some things were going wrong with it, that led to an investigation that we're now doing a lot of work on it um, to help restore it back to good running condition. And we'll be following up this video in the future with a number showing the restoration of this particular vehicle so we capture some of the issues we've been finding with it and, and seeing it hopefully back to good running condition again.